we are gathered here today to celebrate the life and death of Bethesda. What killed them was entirely their fault, but at least we can still play Skyrim on 76 different consoles. Please join me in prayer. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to Everyday Nerd, the show we... Forget it. I'm, I'm, giving up, I'm giving up the act. I'm pissed. This was the worst thing I've ever spent $60 on. I'm your host, Zack Snyder, and taste feels bad Friday. Happy Friday. You know why you're here. Fallout 76 came out last month. And I, for some reason, decided to pre-order it. And I was finally able to sit down and actually play some of it. And it's not good. It's not worth anybody's time. And it sure as hell was not worth my $60. Imagine waking up on Christmas morning. You've opened up all of your presents. But wait, there's one more beneath the tree. What could it be? You open it up and to your surprise, it's none other than Fallout 76. <laughs> Well, now that Christmas has been ruined, what do you do? It's time to set fire to the whole place. Yes, you're home <laughs> and start a new life somewhere else. Because man, imagine being that insulted by your own family. Now, fortunately, I wasn't insulted by my family. You know, my family wouldn't do that to me. Instead, I was the culprit that insulted myself. For some reason, I decided to trust Todd Howard right after I turned his entire E3 special into a Netflix comedy special. It was entertaining. But who would have thought, who would have thought that this Fallout 76 would be the biggest joke of that entire presentation? If you couldn't tell, Fallout 76 is the biggest disappointment of a game I've ever played. And I've played a lot, a lot of sh games. It can only be compared to the amount of disappointment that I felt when I watched Justice League. And yet, Fallout 76 is still worse. I've never seen a game miss so many marks. Usually when I play a terrible game, I have at least a couple of positives. And yet the only positives that I can think of for Fallout 76 is that, hey, it's got a good soundtrack. Now, keep in mind, when you play a Fallout 76, you listen to the in-game radio. This radio consists of classical music and oldies both of which you can listen to on Spotify. It does, it does have a nice ambient soundtrack by Iron Sir, but guess what? You can also listen to that on Spotify. So keep your $60 and pay for a Spotify premium account instead because that's, that's about all you're gonna get good out of this game. Now, I do wanna say I don't wanna on Fallout 76 for the entirety of this video. But man, I can't help it. This game is so boring. I would rather sit at a wall and stare for 76 hours. There's nothing good about this game. I tried to get through the main campaign. I tried. I sat there for five hours playing this game, trying to get through the main story. But guess what? There is no story. When I look up the walkthrough, you know what the walkthrough says? It says the same boring tasks over and over again. Let me... Life is older, older than the trees, younger than the mountains, growing like a breeze. You know how Bethesda has a lot of lore within their games? You play Skyrim, you pick up a book, you can read the book, it's lore. Well, for Fallout 76, instead you get audiobooks. Audiobooks that are so painstakingly boring that you don't want to listen to them. And if you're playing the game while you're on Discord with your friends, or if you were to play the game with friends like Fallout 76 wants you to, guess what? You wouldn't be able to listen to the lore anyways. Oh, and that doesn't matter if you're playing with friends or if you're by yourself or not, because you're still going to be able to hear any person that's playing the game and near your area. They just won't shut up. People just keep talking about mundane things. Oh, and I hope you have your mic turned off inside the game because I was sitting there for the very first time in the beta. I played for an hour during the beta. I'm sitting there playing, I'm talking to friends on Discord, and all of a sudden I hear somebody talking and I'm thinking, oh, that's cool. I tell the people in the Discord call, I'm telling my friends, I'm like, hey, you can actually listen to other people talking in the game even if you're not friends with them. I'm like, that's kind of neat, you know, it's kind of like, like an NPC, you know, that's kind of cool. And when I said, hey, you can hear the other people on there, the other person said, yeah, we can hear you too. Nani? I'm like, what? What? Okay, 
Well, I'm glad that <laughs> I'm glad that Fallout 76 defaults your mic on. That's wonderful. Good thing I wasn't talking about them, because I'm, I'm sure those people would have loved that. So the whole appeal of Fallout 76 is supposedly to make up your own fun. Uh, Todd Howard even says, make your own fun. It's, it's, it's great. You play with friends, you play with other people that you don't know. There are no NPCs whatsoever. There are quests though. There's the main quest and then there's branching off different like smaller quests. You would think since this is a Bethesda game, they would be like quests in, you know, Fallout New Vegas or Fallout 3 or Skyrim or literally any other Bethesda game within the last 15 years. Unfortunately though, these quests are boring. The main quest to get you to play the game, to get you to do anything, it's like a tutorial. It's like a 15 hour tutorial. I didn't play the whole thing. I played five hours of it. It was literally like, go to this town, look in this computer, find this person. Oh, this person is near a river. Okay, let's check the water. Let's check the water. Let's get some water. And then it's like, analyze the water. So I go to a computer that's like 300 feet away from the river, analyze the water, and guess what it says? This water is contaminated. No f***ing sh Are you serious? The water's contain. Wow, that's... I wouldn't thought that the water would have radiation in a game called Fallout. So I go back to the computer and it says, go find this other person. So I find this other person. He's also dead. He's in a, you know, a cabin. And it's like, pick up this steak. Cook the steak. That was two and a half hours. That was when I looked up the walkthrough and realized that everything else in the main quest was just like that. None of it was interesting. None of it was fun. So what did I do for the other two and a half hours and in between all that? Well, I tell you what I did. I killed enemies. All of which they acted pretty much the exact same. All of which were pretty boring. I never saw one of the bigger enemies that I was kind of excited for in the trailers. But I didn't care enough to go find them. Because apparently they act the exact same anyways. Um, other than that, I did nothing else. I saw maybe three people throughout the entire time I was playing. Um, all of which I weren't interested in interacting with. Because I was talking to friends on Discord. Who were keeping my sanity afloat. And that, that was it. That was it. And so it left me thinking, what is good about this game? Well, the combat is kind of, eh, it's not that great. Um, they use the VAT system that Fallout fans are pretty, you know, they're used to the VAT system. Unfortunately though, since it's an online always game, you can't use the VAT system properly. You have to, it doesn't slow down time, which is fine. It's like an auto aim thing, which I'm, I'm cool with. I'm terrible at first person shooters. So I was okay with it. Um, unfortunately though, you get really, really bad percentages with it. So it doesn't even matter. And then if you were going to use it like a first person shooter, it's also pretty bad. The combat, the combat's awful. Combat's absolutely not worth your time whatsoever. So then the other thing I'm thinking, okay, so I'm, I'm thinking of it like a Bethesda game, Skyrim. I've played probably about a hundred hours of Skyrim. Not nearly as much as most people have that's played the game, but I've played a decent amount, right? I like Skyrim. I almost love Skyrim. I love playing that game. It's a really chill game. Play it every once in a while. So I'm thinking of Fallout 76 in the terms of playing Skyrim or the, the 20 hours or so that I played a Fallout New Vegas, which I do want to play more of. Um, but now I'm, now I'm like, you know, reconsidering my relationship with that Bethesda, but we'll talk about that in a bit. I'm thinking of what I like about a Bethesda game, the lore. I like the lore. I like the storytelling. Well, I'm not going to listen to a bunch of audiobooks in Fallout 76. So that's out of the question. I like the world building. The world building is pretty good. Well, there's no NPCs. So there's no world building. There's no true storytelling here. So, okay, what do we got? I like the world. I like the actual world that's crafted for me. Um, Fallout 76's world, it's boring. It's just, it's just boring. There's, there's nothing interesting about it. I, there's a lot of trees. There's a lot of mountains. There's a lot of radiation, of course. Uh, but it's almost like Skyrim's world, except there's no reason to explore Fallout 76's world because there's nothing there. And, and the final thing is Bethesda, especially when you get mods, but the first time I played Skyrim, I thought it was a beautiful game. I thought for 2011, this is kind of beautiful. You know, it's rough around the edges. 
It's not it's not the most beautiful game that came out that year. It's not the most beautiful game ever by no by no means. But here I am playing a brand new 2018 game. I've only played three games this year. Mega Man 11, which looked great. Uh, Delta Room, which looked great. And Fallout 76. Which looked like... So, I mean, there's nothing that made me want to play Fallout 76. I didn't care about the multiplayer aspect of it. And I guess maybe that should have been the thing that cued me to not get this game. But I thought... Number one, I pre-ordered it because I had a little bit of extra money back in June. That was why I pre-ordered it. I was like, alright, this is a game that I'm going to pre-order. I can get uh, I can get into the beta when I pre-ordered it. So that was that was my plan. Even though I only ended up being able to play one hour of the beta. Whatever. So I figured Fallout 76 might not be good. I actually thought Fallout 76 probably won't be good. The multiplayer aspect worries me. And the reason the multiplayer aspect worried me was because I thought it was going to be like a battle royale in a Bethesda game. Except it didn't end up being that. The more and more news that I heard about this game, it was talking about how like, no, it's like you're playing a single player Bethesda game, but the multiplayer is there. So I was like, okay, cool, cool. I'll get it. Maybe I have a few friends that, that'll get it. I had some friends that were interested in it. They're not now. Um, I can play it with them if I get the opportunity to, or if I want to. That's cool. And so I decided to pre-order it for that fact. I thought maybe I'd be able to play it with somebody. Nope. I don't blame, I don't want to play it anymore. I'm not going to play it anymore. Even if they make Fallout 76 better, I have no intentions on going back to it. So I wanted to show you, I wanted to show you one more thing. I pre-ordered Fallout 76 and I got the case. I got the case, boy. I pre-ordered the physical copy of Fallout 76 on GameStop's website when I bought my PS4. Had it delivered to me. Um, I ended up getting day two. I didn't even get day one. Thanks, GameStop. But I opened up this bad boy, and I get a few things. I get a few things. I get a little advertisement for Rage 2. I don't give a f about Rage 2. I get an advertisement about Doom and more Eternal. I'm a little hype about that, but I don't know if I should be anymore, because Bethesda, I'm not really trusting at the moment. Um, I get a little Fallout 76 pamphlet. We'll, we'll get back to that in a second. I get a sticker. Guys, I basically paid $60 for six hours of gameplay and a sticker. So uh, I'm cherishing the f out of the sticker. And then uh, the disc. I'll show you the disc. Oh wait, this isn't a disc. This is a piece of cardboard. It's literally a piece of cardboard. I didn't even get a disc. I got a piece of cardboard. Okay, um, and then we got the warranty. Oh, it's like a little manual. I didn't even notice this. Cause I didn't care. It's like a little manual. So you open it up, right? And it's got warning, read this in, you know, it's all little safety things. You might have a seizure if you play this game. I think I might have a seizure because of playing this game, honestly. Uh, rest for at least 10 to 15 minutes per hour while playing. I would recommend resting uh, 76 hours out of the 76 hours of playing this game. And uh, there's technical and customer support and you can call them later so you can get a refund. Oh, and then there's the controls. I'm glad they have controls in there. Oh, speaking of the controls, the controls are awful. <laughs> They're not intuitive. I was pressing the escape button and the menu button and all this kind of shit, and it was confusing the crap out of me. But I get to the warranty information, and um, I think I need to. I think I need to call them about getting a refund. It says Bethesda Softworks warrants to you, the original purchaser of this disc and the game software encoded therein, that under normal use, the game shall be free from defects in material and workmanship for a period of 90 days from the date of purchase. Well, Bethesda, we have a problem. Your warranty promises me there's no defects. Your game is all defects. I want my money back. Thank you for watching this episode of Your Everyday Nerd. I will see you tomorrow for a new video where we talk about hopefully something better than this game. Um, if you liked the video, <laughs> go ahead hit the like button. If you didn't like it, I don't care and uh, I'll, I'll subscribe to the channel cuz we, we need to hit uh, we need to hit a thousand subscribers cuz I promised somebody that I would dab on camera so if we hit a thousand subscribers I can dab on uh, dab on Bethesda because I hate them and uh, we'll see you next time if anybody wants to buy my copy of Skyrim on the switch I'm selling it so that I can hopefully get some more of my money back from uh, from 
from buying Fallout 76. Bye!